welcome to a very memorable episode of ETCIO Leader Speaks. Memorable and really grand. And I can say that with unabashed confidence because I have with me a stellar guest today. I'm Sneha Jha, editor of ETCIO, and I feel very privileged today to be interviewing Mr. R. Gopalakrishnan. Mr. R. Gopalakrishnan is a man of many parts. He is a celebrated author, corporate advisor, an inspirational speaker, and a very interesting conversationalist, as you will find out in the course of this interview. And we're going to be talking to him about institution building in business. This is a special episode. Savor it. Uh, good morning, sir. Welcome to ETCIO Leader Speak. I know your time is precious and I'm so grateful to you that you chose to share it with me to shoot this episode of ETCIO Leader Speak. Thank you, Sneha. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, sir. Institution building in business is not a create once and use forever concept. It needs to be maintained and nurtured to persist. We've seen examples of business groups like Mahindra, Tata, Bajaj and Godrej who are not just places of business. They are central to the idea of institution building in business. They have demonstrated longevity, resilience, relevance. They have also combined the success factors of human capital, structural capital, customer capital, and have also looked at the greater good of society. So all of this requires a large vision, an overarching vision. So in this episode of ETCIO Leaders Speak, I thought we would talk to you about the dynamics and dilemmas of institution building in business. What makes institutions endure? What are the principles of perpetuity? And how can employees play a role in building an institution? These are some of the questions that we will reflect upon as we try to unpack the components of institution building in business. So let's start out with a fundamental question. What is the difference between building a business like a company and building a business like an institution? You know, it's a very good question and I always find allegories and metaphors helpful to explain. Um, think of the Taj Mahal in Agra uh, and think of uh, Kabristan in Park Circus or in Chandanwadi. Both are Kabristans, functionally. They contain the remnants of some person. But the Taj Mahal is the Taj Mahal and a Kabristan is a Kabristan. Think of the Red Fort in Delhi. And think of a modern bungalow in golf links in Delhi. Both have been residences of somebody. But one lasts forever, has a grandeur, brings awe, is magnificent, is solid, and it stays on for centuries. And one may last 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, then it's gone. And the difference between a company and an institution is somewhat similar. You mentioned a little while ago Tata, you mentioned Godrej. These are 100 and plus years over. Bajaj, you know, they're all 100 plus years. Uh, it doesn't mean that young companies cannot become institutions. But you see that Tata, Godrej, Bajaj, Mahindra, they create a sense of awe in people. It's a wow. And I regard an institution, therefore, as being long-living, sustainable, honest. I don't use the word honest in a pedestal sense because you can always argue about something or the other but generally considered uncontroversial and business-like and serving society. And I call those she companies sustainable, honest, uh, enlightened. And she also gives a nice feminine touch. 
to an otherwise what many people in society consider crass profit making institution so i am a great believer in institutions which i call she companies and they are very very difficult to construct and they are even more difficult to perpetuate anybody can make a baby in their family but to make that baby into a scholar or an actor who has contributed to society is a very different cup of tea and that's the difference Right. I think that's the best legacy you can leave in the world. Exactly. So you mentioned about this she company, and that's a very interesting concept, and I'd like to dig deeper into it. Uh, when you talk about a company uh, being sustainable, honest, and enlightened, does a she company uh, coexist with an enterprise? It, is the idea of a she company compatible with an activity like an enterprise? You know, the general view can be cynical. by enterprise means dhanda and you know you have to do all sorts of stuff and it's a idealistic world to say that you can make a she company it is like somebody you go and say can a politician be honest and he says well you know all politicians are bad um, that's not a very constructive way of looking at the future and i am a bit idealistic i think human development and progress civilizational progress has happened because enough people of intellect thought about the future positively and strive to create something that was closer to ideal the founders of mahindra and tata and godrej were not geniuses today you may call them a genius but they were people who had good intentions and they did good things and they imbibed this into the dna of the companies they created and therefore i do believe that while there is no perfect she company in the world i have worked in two which are wonderful she companies unilever which is an anglo dutch company in india known as hindustan unilever and uh, tatas neither of them is perfect i can tell you as an insider and you don't need me to tell you every outsider can tell you three things that he or she had a bad experience on but there will be 30 for other people <laughs> so i do believe that she enterprise she companies can coexist with enterprise but it's a very high standard right it's about a vision it's about a vision which you it's like saying can you get a gold medal in the university mm-hmm. when everybody won't get a gold medal right. but to have a child who is entering university say mujhe gold medal se koi matlab nahi hai may not be such a great idea right. so uh, so you spoke about a she company and we can view it as a vision uh, for a better society for a better uh, business environment for a better nation building activity vision is not a constrained forward thing it's an opportunity backward thing uh, but the reality is that organizations have to deal with quarterly results so are quarterly targets compatible with the idea of building an institution as opposed to a company i don't think they are I am not a great fan of quarterly results. This whole idea that the purpose of a company is to generate profits for shareholders is in my humble view many clever people have said that Milton Friedman to example uh, and today a lot of private equity venture capital people think the quicker you make money and get out the better and the whole ecosystem has come up around it and that's a myopic view of business. It's like producing a child at home. You know, at a personal level, we all have families and you have a child at home. Now if the mother of the girl, girl child just as an example, thinks I must make her into a top actress and milk money out of her, uh, then you produce that you raise that girl in a particular way. I am not here to judge other mothers. But that's quarterly results. <laughs> That's a very good example. At the age of eight, you wanted to bring in money into the household. Maybe you need it. Maybe you are poor, and I am not uh, critical of it. But you, the result, the outcome is different. So I am not a great fan of quarterly results, and I think I admire companies where the leaders of public companies, like many Tata companies, like Hindustan Labour. who say yes i have to give quarterly result the law requires it but i am not going to compromise my principles because of that and that i like you have to focus on the long term only okay but if you don't protect the short term 
you won't survive to deal with the long term so i always again metaphorically take the example of a young mother i see my daughters having babies and grandchildren in my family and they are remarkably able to deal with the crying baby the feed and the midnight uh, you know all that stuff but they never stop dreaming that i want my daughter to be a painter or a artist or a journalist or economist or whatever mothers are very good examples of dealing with quarterly results without sacrificing the long term and i again it's a feminine feminization of corporations and enterprises and i'm a great believer as a father of two daughters and the husband of one wife <laughs> that feminization brings in a certain uh certain softness which is required the idea of she company exactly so uh, i do believe that you can deal with quarterly results without giving up the long term but your priority should be long term protect the short term Uh, so what goes into the institutionalization of a business can you give us some examples from the indian context and the global con- the context you see uh, people who start a business start up founders i mean william hesketh lever who founded unilever was also a founder he was the zomato tomato of 150 years ago okay um you take um uh, hershey chocolates uh, milton hershey was a founder and so was jamshed ji tata and so were uh, kamal nayan bajaj and so on and so forth i mean these people founded companies they are like mothers who said why am i got this baby into this world but she immediately starts dreaming ki ye samaj mein kya karega mere bich padhai karna hai she doesn't disc- modern mothers don't discourage their daughters from studying in college or school i mean those are all old fashioned ideas and you want to make if your daughter at 25 gets a gold medal and she gets a job in a big company or she joins a painting school or becomes a faculty member as a parent you feel proud and that's what those founders did so those are the seeds of institution building now you can have other kinds of parenting also and i'm not here to judge other people's parenting but some can say values and all that baad mein dekha jayega abhi ke liye fatten the child quickly usko khilao pilao at the age of 10 the guy is overweight not because of any physiological problem but you have pampered him jo marzi hai khareed lo he's carrying two cell phones now if you think that's the way to raise your child is fine but at the age of 20 or 25 you may find that it's a bit awkward now god doesn't deliver equal benefits to everybody and we cannot predict these things sometimes you do have somebody with a physiological or a, 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 a you know problem which is about the health i'm not including those cases and i'm not for a moment suggesting that they are bad parents don't get me wrong but i'm saying it's the endeavor of a parent read founder to impart values which are sustainable honest and enlightened to the child early on and if you have your child of 5 years old but you are lying say usko bol do hum ghar mein nahi hai and the child is watching it then i think it is going one step less than sustained honest and enlightened right so it's about connecting values with the exactly. potential a vision and a and a goal exactly okay. if you have values value is the seed from which the plant springs yeah and values will uh, will create patterns and then will cr- all, also kind of foster the potential and then it will lead to performance now you take the example of uh, jamshed ji tata mm-hmm. uh, he was inspired by fabian socialism what was happening in britain in those days and when he set up a steel plant he said i want a township with it because who the hell is going to go to sakchi mm-hmm. to make steel loha banane ke liye so the schools and colleges and gardens and well it's over 120 years jabshed pur has come up you take william hesket lever he said my business is a way to improve the lives of people in victorian england so he set up a township port sunlight today unilever will not set up a township it's not necessary because the infrastructure has come up you take milton hershey 
in Pennsylvania, he set up Hershey Town. So, this is what I mean by putting values. They said my fundamental reason for the business is it must do good to the people of this community. And uh, today it may manifest itself in a different way. Paying fair wages, being gender sensitive, you know, uh, equal opportunity employer and so on and so forth. Meritocracy. So it varies from time to time. But values are values. Absolutely. Like you said, it's about um, not just finding your purpose in life, but also being able to give back to life and society. Exactly. Right. Right. And if you can create a community of people mm -hmm. who can share a purpose of doing bhalai, mm -hmm. I think it's your greatest contribution. Right. And that can then foster the principles of egalitarianism in society, like you said. Exactly. Equality, exactly. Gender diversity. Exactly. Right. So, um, a lot of it, uh, like we are discovering in the course of this interview, is around uh, creating a shared value system. Uh, do you think uh, management, education or corporate training can help with uh, building blocks of uh, institutionalization in a business? Of course it can. Because at the end of the day, we institutions are not created by one enlightened leader. I mean, you say Jamseji Tata, you say William Heskett Lever, you say Milton Hershey, but it has to be perpetuated. So let me again, as you can by now see, I'm very fond of metaphors. Take the Ganga. There's a small trickle in a place called Gangotri. Most people have not been there. And when you see the little trickle, you don't think this can become a mighty river. By the time it comes to the Doab in UP, it's a big broad river with banks which are far apart. And by the time it reaches Bengal, it is splintered into multiple deltas in its eagerness to go and meet the ocean. Now it is providing livelihood, energy, solitude, calmness, meditation, holiness, whatever you want to attribute, right from Gangotri to there. But most people see the Hooghly. They have seen the Ganga at Patna. Nobody has been to Gangotri. So the Gangotri is the original philosophy of the business. And it is successors who will perpetuate that philosophy. So there has to be a Jamshedji Tata who has a philosophy that I have created a company because it is part of the, it's not a part of the community, it is the very reason for it to exist. The community is the reason. Then he has a son called Dorabji Tata who has to take that forward and so on and so forth right up to Mr. Chandrasekhar nowadays. And you have to be able to carry on the basic core principle. You may modernize it and say it in a different way, but the core principle must be there. Ki hum samaj ke liye hai. That's how progress happens in a family and it's exactly the same with a company. You start with the small seed and watch it become an oak tree. And that is what serves uske saya mein kitne log aake baithte. Which also makes a business not just transactional and employer-employee relationship but building it like a family, that, that whole family values. That and it may sound idealistic mm -hmm. but uh, there are always limitations and you can criticize any company, but there are some companies that seem to have learned to do this. Institutions are often shaped by a visionary leader. But can an institution be shaped by its employees instead? Companies are shaped by institution builders, but institutions are perpetuated by employees. Because um, you take any religion, um, Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, anything. What the founder of that religion, assuming such a person exists, got was a tablet with ten commandments on it. <laughs> One guy came back and said, you know, this is the vision I had and these are the things. Over the next centuries, that original philosophy, which in essence is Sukshma Rup, it is the hardcore essence, gets interpreted into mythologies. Ram ne ye kiya, Krishna ne ye kiya, Radha ne ye kiya. Then you get mythologies. So from a philosophy, you get mythologies. Icons carry that forward. Shankaracharya came, Ramanuja came, Chaitanya came. And then they become rituals. So when a child is born, he says, Mandir mein jao, ye karo, aisa, aisa karo, you know. Many people do the rituals. 
आजकल बहुत लोग इंक्लूडिंग मी एंड यू बाय द वे बिकॉज आर फादर और ग्रैंड फादर टॉटर समथिंग वी वुल गो एंड डू इट बट वी डोंट नो वॉट वॉट इज ऑल अबाउट and the scholars and the intellectuals are sitting at the philosophy level and that's why i think it's very important for companies to perpetuate their uh, legends their icons so i think it's very important to think of companies and institutions as having a philosophy which is then converted into legends which is then converted into rituals and if you want to sustain this over 150 years You must have all the three. So you said it's about philosophy and then creating legends. But in this era of uh, dynamic technology changes coming in with digital and AI, uh, how will the leader of the future be for such uh, changing and evolving institutions? What should a leader do to ensure that he or she is more future relevant rather than past relevant? You see, uh, this is a very good question, and I don't know if there's a simple answer to it. but i'm going to make it simple at the risk of appearing especially to your audience cio etcio well also for techy types i do not put technology on a pedestal anybody who puts technology and does aarti to it in the morning um is in my humble view making a mistake right it's a means to an end it's a means to an end right. at the end of the day you cannot replicate human compassion इंसानियत चाहिए सो इफ यू आई रिमेंबर वेन आई वॉज अ किड आई यूज टू गो टू आर विलेज माई ग्रैंड फादर वॉज वॉट एवर ही वॉज सिक्सटी ईयर्स ओल्ड एट दैट टाइम एंड ही वुड टेल मी दैट वेन ही वॉज अ किड हिज ग्रैंड फादर सो दिस गोज बैक हंड्रेड ईयर्स नाउ टू किम टू द रेलवे स्टेशन एंड शोड इम अ स्टीम इंजिन फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एटीन नाइन्टी और नाइनटीन हंड्रेड और and you tell me in tamil ke wo big black monster hafta hafta aata tha and you could go from the village to madras in 8 hours 9 hours hum log to 8 10 din lagate the so kayamat aa gaya hai aap log kaise sambhaloge i don't know now i am telling my grandchildren the same thing <laughs> ki ye computer aa gaya ek minute mein kaam kar deta hai aap log kaise sambhaloge so technology is a means to an end ye jo dil hai na compassion hai na this can never be replaced the day you let it be replaced artificial intelligence aane do but natural intelligence ko nahi chhodna akal mandi natural intelligence pe hai artificial intelligence pe nahi hai and also the emotions and the emotions that go with it insanit is all about emotion Actually, and passing love how will you create love an emotion is energy in motion and you need that energy in absolutely your So I think this is a very important point. I don't think CIOs or uh, technical technology people will disagree. But what happens in real life is, hey, this new thing has come. We get fascinated. It's, it's like a it's child a with, a, with a new toy, and then you get absorbed with it. And uh, people won't let their mobile phone go. Kabi dekho na, Akash Neel kyo hai? Hawa kyo beh raha hai? Pani kahan se aata hai? Pyar kahan se aata hai? and then you get a different picture of the world and if you can like a mother you can be very busy with the gadgets and the excitement of technology but if, if you want to dream about your daughter becoming a professor after 30 years then you must have place for insaniyat pyar compassion and love absolutely agree with you so since we are talking about it uh, what do you think leaders should do so that they are able to balance the technical aspects of Uh, logical thinking analytical thinking reasoning with the uh, issues uh, softer issues like uh, emotional uh, intelligence uh, also things like trust accountability and empathy yeah i think this is another very good question because uh, it, it doesn't have a simple answer but i want to make it simple to find an answer to this i went back into indian philosophy it's very difficult to understand it all becomes rather abstruse you know when you read indian philosophy any philosophy but out of the vedantic tradition i pulled out four items which are relevant for the question you're asking okay i'll never give a talk on vedanta wearing a saffron robe because i'm incompetent for that 
what are those four things when you set up a business what does the vedantic principle require you to do which will be the answer hidden answer to your question the first thing it says is uh, serve others the second thing it says is protect your resources sustainability you know look after the ped pauda animal sustain the third thing it says is always behave compassionately and the fourth thing it says is work to benefit society now what more do you want if you want it over simplified and if you ask yourself every morning as i have been trained in the companies i worked with in unilever and tatas not to ask myself every morning but periodically ask myself how am i uh, i'm giving prosperity to other people have i created new jobs have i contributed to creating a new factory a new vertical in bennett colman or hindustan lever uh, have i improved the quality of other people's lives but bhalai karo then you might have earned a few points but compassion is what is holding it all together compassion is like a sauce aap jisme bhi usme noodles dalo aur rice dalo sauce ki nahi hogi to wo noodle phika rahega and this is what will protect you from getting sucked into technology like a vortex ab usi mein phans jaoge thank you so much for your generosity in sharing your time and insights with us today it was a very intellectually stimulating enriching and engaging conversation as i knew it would be thank you so much sir thank you sneha i value the opportunity given by etcio it's a message i feel passionately about and to the extent that you can uh, share the message with as many people as possible and there are so many life lessons uh, coming from a person like you so i'll be very happy and somebody may not agree with me that's all right but uh, i would very much like to use uh, your forum to tell as many people as possible that after 50 years of being around in corporate life i do believe you can make india inc can make far better companies than we are doing today for the benefit of society thank you so much i hope you liked this episode of etcio leader speak with mr r gopalakrishnan it's a long one but it has multiple layers and it is rich with several anecdotes and examples thank you for watching